two in what might be a memorable day for Matthew Pinson who was already an extraordinary rowing career. Great Britain, lane number five, watching the Italians in lane number four. A race order for you, Ukraine in one, top of the picture when we're side on. Greece in two, Romania in three, Italy four, Great Britain five, and USA will be side on in lane number six. Great Britain need a fantastic start and they need to kill this race in the first 500. The sharp end dictating the race plan. So these guys can just think picks the following year, bronze in the Cox pair and gold in the Coxless. So they're looking to put it right today as we head towards end. Great Britain, Romania, Italy. There's a sort of pairs of them. That's the one that really matters for them. So they're their club Cox. Uh, he won another 23 gold medal back in 1991. And this is a great day for him. Wonderful trip for him when they decided to uh, take this event. Uh, they're doing a little push now just to try and open up there from the Italians who are clearly now the chasing pair. So Great Britain now starting to push out for the length. The Italians pounding them. They've come through Romania. Romania was quick in the first 500 meters. But let's remember the Italians now will be fast in that last 500. They've got to clear the Italians. Pulling the shots. All they have to do is think about the rowing. The final of the Cox pair goes through the 1,000 metres and Great Britain lead. They lead now by just under a length. Italy in second place, Romania in third. While everyone else is out the back now, the race is Great Britain's at the moment. This is very important, the next 250 metres. They've got to open up clear water because they'll know they're just there. They're about a length ahead because the Italians will be fast in this third and then the last 500 metres. Yeah, okay. they are rowing so well. I, I, th this is some of the best rowing I've seen them do. Because remember that, uh, uh, that uh, James has had to change sides from uh, stroke side to bow side to row in this pair. So it takes about six or seven months really to get really comfortable sitting in a seat like that with a changeover. But here they really are looking very good. And this style there of the, uh, the, the Romanians, they sit very upright. And I don't think that Carpuccini is going to be able to do anything about it. He was furious, really upset when he found out that they were doubling up and wearing this Cox pair, Carpuccini. Uh, and here he is now, having to come in second yet again. He thought he was going to have a good easy ride here, I think. Well, the British are making it difficult for everybody, but we come to expect that. But the race has still got some 600 or so metres to go. We're looking at the Romanians there, doubling up in the eight tomorrow. But now Great Britain have got the all-important uh, length. They've got just about a length, they just need another foot and they've got clear water. The Italians in second place, look at the Italians going. Great Britain though, they look good. Well, it's, it's, it, they're at 34, they're having to push a little bit, they're at 34. They knew that the Italian pair would be going for it, but now the Italians are really going to put them under pressure. So they've really been solid and strong here. We've got 500 metres remaining in the final of the men's Cox pairs and Great Britain now lead by one length over Italy. The final 500 metres now, this is the all-important part. What have Italy got to do? Lorenzo Carboncini in the Italian boat. He's stroking silver from Sydney in the Coxless ball that almost rode our British boys down in Sydney last year. Will he have enough? In the legs, this is a tough man event. The last time we won this, the British boys won this, was back in 1993. The Searle brothers, I think, with uh, you at the production seat, was it? With me up in the so this there. With me up in the sharp end, and by this time I was screaming in the last 500 meters because the things changed. So the length is not a lot, then, in the Cox pair event. But it was also with an Italian crew up, uh, coming after you, wasn't it? I mean, the Italians, they live in the shadow of the Avignale brothers. I mean, the Cox pair event is such an important event for the Italians. And we had hoped they would be a bit closer here, but out front, the Great Britain crew are looking very, very good. They haven't moved from that 34 strokes a minute. They're very, very slow. They're not even having to take a big push. Look how calm and relaxed that is. Very strong. It's really just a long paddle for them. Again, conserving energy. They're going to rip right round here, head back to the tents, and uh, get a cool down before they prepare for the Cox's Pairs event in two hours time. Well, here come Italy now. 150 metres remain now. The British crowd here are going wild because the Italians are all standing up. The Italians are urging on the Italian Cox pair and they are responding. The Italians are starting to come back now. Great Britain is starting to push. We have about eight or nine strokes remaining to the line. Here come the Italians. They've got power in their legs. Will Great Britain respond? The Italians are closing on every single stroke. As we come up to the line, there must be a foot in it as Great Britain just take it. Wow, that was exciting for the last 10 strokes there. But Great Britain seemed to just be paddling up to the line. They waited until the last 10 strokes before they put it up. He really, really took that a bit tight, I thought. <laughs> I mean, they were, they were at a length. Italy came right at them. But Matthew Pinsent, cool as cucumber, didn't 
do anything until the last. Going through 250 meters in lane number one, Yugoslavia leading closest to us. We're looking at them there, Argentina, lane at number six. They're taking the wide boat. Well, they've come right down onto their race pace here. They're really down onto about 37 strokes per minute. And we're looking at the crews behind Italy in lane number three. We thought they were, might well be their main uh, competition. But at the moment, Yugoslavia up in lane number one are looking pretty good. Well, Yugoslavia were fifth in Sydney, so they know uh, they know their way around. They were second in Vienna, uh, five seconds behind the British pair. So we know we've been here before. It's now really a matter of just making sure they've eased into their race, they're feeling good, and they're well in the hunt here. First timing mark, 500 down, 1500 to go, and Great Britain in third place. Don't worry, it's relaxed, they'll be relaxed. They're such cool, calm customers, aren't they, really? Because they need to, they, at least they, if they get to the halfway mark in the race, they know they can unleash. Remember that uh, James has had to change sides. So uh, it's a, this is a difficult thing. When the pressure really comes on, you can see James's head begin to lift off there, because he's trying to move the thing along. He's got to guard against being a bit over eager. He's got to go with Matthew and make sure he stays there. But they're, they're tough here. It's a very tough call. We're through 750 meters. I'm not worried about Argentina in lane six, but Romania now are starting to squeeze through. They're the Romanians. They're also really racing in the men's eights final tomorrow. So this is going to be a tough race for them. They'll want to, if they're going to win, want to win comfortably. But who wins comfortably against the British well, boys? They're slipping back. They're slipping back a little bit all the time here. Yugoslavia's got the Liga length on them. That's not good news. And this could well be the proof that it is a damn tough thing to do. Last British pair to do that. That's Steve sitting in the studio. He knows what it's like to be doing two events. He did it twice in 1987 and 1988. In 1987 Worlds, it was gold and silver. At the Olympics, it was gold and bronze. So he's been there. He knows exactly what they're feeling now at halfway. It's the final of the men's coxless pairs. It's halfway and it's race on. Because have we ever seen in the coxless pairs Great Britain lying in fourth place? Now the guys have to just unleash a little bit more power and as well as concentrating on the technique because in the coxless pair, technique is everything there in lane number one. We're through Argentina. Argentina in lane six closest to us. We're not worried about them now. Up, uh, but here now. Here now. They're beginning to push it on. Matthew has raised the rate. They're beginning to push it on. They've held and checked those leading pairs and now they're going to start to make their move. But by goodness, they've got a lot to do. Argentina there, you can see the pain it's uh, caused for them just to be at this stage of the race. But Great Britain have got the overlap now, they're starting to wind it up. We've still got quite a way to go. They're winding in on Romania, lane number two. Yugoslavia still one length in lane number one. Romania, lane two. Great Britain, lane four. We're just watching our monitor and watching the uh, splits here to see the British boat come back. And we are coming back. Here comes the blue in the pump. Remember, just uh, uh, two months ago, Yugoslavia were five seconds behind this British pair. Five hundred to go, and look at the British club. Last bit, 500 remain, 1500 down. We move up now into third place. Yugoslavia and Romania lead us by not very much. Now the power, we have to turn the knob, we have to increase the speed of the legs going down because they've got quite a bit to do. One length down. And only 400 meters to go. River's running out, they've got a case for movement. Here they come. Now here they come, they're up to 39 strokes a minute. They are now just about level with Romania. Still about a half a length to go on those leading Yugoslavs on the far side. 300 meters. Great Britain are exploding with power. James Cracknell to the right of your picture. Matthew Pinson to the left. They're just looking right because they can see they're still being led by the Yugoslavians. Now we've got a race on our hands. And now we've got something for the crowd who are enjoying this because they are still being led by not by a couple of feet. It's 200 meters. This is extraordinary. In the last 40 strokes, they've got the half a length down to take the lead. And as they come past now, come past the stand, they've hit the front, but my goodness, the Yugoslavs are fighting back. This is neck and neck between these two, and they've only got about 200 meters to go. So we're coming in for the last line now. Yugoslavia responding to Great Britain. Up goes Matthew Pinson, followed by James. They've shortened the slide. They're speeding it up. They're going up through 40 strokes per minute, 42 strokes per minute. And the Yugoslavians up there in lane number one have responded. It's going to be a race for the line. It's Great Britain. It's Yugoslavia at lane number one. The Yugoslavians are coming back. Have Great Britain done enough? It's close. It's close. It's a photo finish. It's a photo finish between Yugoslavia in lane number one and already Matthew Pinson, his head goes down 
because that was powerful and that was painful. I mean, they had to unleash so much there in the last 500 meters. But they weren't expecting Yugoslavia to come back again. I think they hit the front and I think that the Yugoslavs might have just squeezed back again. They were relying on their huge power. There was a lot to do and it could well be. We're looking at the replay, we're watching, it's close. I think Great Britain, I think Great Britain by what is called a bow bubble in the trade. Um, not very much, but they haven't, they don't know yet. We're looking at our monitor, the crowd are looking at a big screen across the way here. These are tense moments. Very tense moments. In the middle of the race, I felt that they could have done something there. They just let the Yugoslavs go that little bit further away. I think that was a bit of a mistake. They needed to be. The Yugoslavs think that they might well have done it. But it's going to be, we're going to wait for that photo, and it really is just a matter of inches here. By point zero zero of a hundred of a second. Fantastic, look at that, they've just seen it now. We saw it first, they've just seen it. The crowd now responding, and it's punching in the air. Yes, double gold medalist at this World Championships. A fine, fine result. Point zero two of a second, what a fight. What a triumph, what an extraordinary race, and they needed every inch of that power, every tiny bit of that power. Look how disappointed the Yugoslavs are. They thought they'd done the job. Stojic there in the stroke seat. Great, great competitor. Can't believe that everything, all the planning, meant just in the end, 0.02 of a second. What a great triumph for the British pair.